And we're partying. No. Bear versus man's packs east. Day one Friday. Hi. Recap. Hello. It's happening right now. You're listening to it. We're in the car. We're in the car. Uh, I'm really tired. I cannot. I cannot speak for Ryan when I say this. Nick's really tired. I'm all right. Um, I've been worse. I'm Nick. I'm really tired. I'm Ryan. I'm okay. Uh, you know, I've been worse too. I think I'm just like super dehydrated. Yeah. I th- well, you didn't drink any water today. Uh, I had this coffee. This that, cup of coffee. But Nick, when you drink the coffee, the it goes through you, and it takes a whole shitload of water with it. It takes all the water. It's like, are you water? Suck me. I peed twice in the past 10 hours, and that's, like, not good. I did three times. Yeah, but, like, you're supposed to pee, like, way more than that. Is that right? I think so. I don't actually know. If you're a doctor, write in questions at bearversusman.com. Uh, come see us at PAX tomorrow. We'll let you know where we're at. Uh, PAX East uh, Saturday, and be like, you're not going to hear this. Whatever. Can I have a button? No, you're not yeah, going like, to have a button. I'll just like, go to the uh, Necropolis bad. booth and play the demo. And then when you, she asks you to reach in and dig a pin out, uh, so we got see, if see if there's any Bear vs. Man pins in there. Uh, I mean buttons. I mean buttons. They're buttons. They're not pins. Pins are very important to PAX. Oh, yes. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I we have about buttons. the connotations of that. Yeah. The button does have a sort of pin... There's pin features that allow you to pin it to things. Yes, like pin like or features. your skin. You can put it like on your neck skin. Mm, I got extra neck skin. Um, really devote yourself to, to the Bear vs. Man brand. Right, we played a lot of video games today. I played. I played a couple. Uh, we didn't actually play like a lot. We played. A, we played many different video games. Yep. But we didn't play a lot of video games. Like the amount of time you spent playing video games is pretty light. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that's, terms of, like, the... That's kind of true. On an average day off from work, I would spend, like, a lot more time actually playing a video game. And I'd be playing, like, the same one. Yeah, probably. We played a lot of different... <coughs> we played a lot of different video games. Yeah, I mean, there was one time that I beat, like, three games in one day, but they were... That doesn't count. That's just a different thing. That's not today. Um, Ryan, I'm kind of hungry. Can we, go, can we stop at the Palm real quick? Can we just go to the Do Palm? you want to go to the Palm restaurant? Um... Yeah, they take credit card, right? Uh, yep. All right, then... I kind of... I mean, I kind of do. But, like, I don't... But, like, I don't want to pay for it. Like, if you ask me, like, do I want to go to the Palm? Like, of course I want to go to the Palm. I want, like, a fucking bomb steak. Yeah, but... Dude. Do I want to... Am I able to or willing to pay for it? No. I mean, I wouldn't go bankrupt if I ate at the Palm right now. I, I probably would. No, I wouldn't. I'd be all right. Yeah, I'd be like, what the... F- if you bought, like, one... If you're like, I'll have one of everything... We're, Bankrupt. We're, I'm looking at the Palm restaurants. Why I said it? Just joke really works well on a podcast. We're video games. Um, video games. What do we play today? Oh, dude! I actually realized about halfway through PAX that I didn't remember half the names of the games I played. Okay. What was your favorite game that you played today? That you that really left a good impression on um, you I, on the show floor today? I really liked um, the the game that you said that we would leave buttons at. Oh, Necropolis. I like that game. I think really? I, I think that game has a lot of promise as a Dark Souls like. So that game is a Dark Souls. Oh, okay. So funny, funny thing about Necropolis. Yeah. Like we spent the first like hour or two just like walking around the show floor, just like just looking. Yep. Like just scoping out the joint, and we saw this game that basically just looked like um, Dark Souls, but you're playing as the guy from Journey. Yep. Uh, and I was like, oh, that looks like exactly like Dark Souls. And so we came back later. Like we came back later, and I was like, okay, maybe there's actually like, there's not a lot of people there. Basically, like, we played the games at the set. There usually wasn't a lot of people playing. Like, we didn't have to wait in line for that long for. Yep. That was most of the games we played. Um, but So there wasn't that many people in line in Necropolis. And I was like, oh, we'll, we'll try and play Necropolis. And then I was like, oh, Ryan, be cool. Be cool. Don't say Dark Souls. Whatever you do, don't say Dark Souls. Yeah. And we got up there, and the lady's like, I'm like, yo, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> yo, watch your mouth. Because I don't know what to do. Like, I'm, uh, as, like, a paying, like, PAX somebody person. who paid to go to PAX, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to these people. Like, Hi, some, show me this thing that I paid money to see. Some people, and we'll get, we'll tell these stories later, some people want, were willing to sell their games to us in, like, 
ways or creative ways or interesting ways. Yeah, one guy um, asked you if you had yeah, a dad. If I had a dad. That was his. That was his fucking elevator pitch, and it was tight. And it, he on. he roped us in hardcore. To, but we were like, we had we didn't know what we wanted to do. Like we were literally like we we wanted to kill thirty minutes. Yeah, but he did a good job. He did, but like we were also like he was shooting fish in a barrel because we had nothing planned. Yeah, that's accurate. Um, so, I, so I, I go up there. I'm like, "Hey, what this mouth do? The necropolis? What's that? Is this um, is this a, a 3D match game? Like three, three match? No, nope. match three? It's not." And she's like, "Have you ever played Dark Souls?" I was like, "Ryan, she said Dark Souls." She did. I was like, "Let the record show that you said Dark Souls and not me." It's not- like basically what I said. I, I I'm terribly embarrassed myself many times today, and I'm, I just have to come to terms with the fact that. The people who I met today demoing their games, uh, I'll never see them again in my life. Except for maybe tomorrow. And Except they won't for, remember me? They won't remember me? Uh, they might, because we're incredibly memorable. One guy claimed that we were there earlier, because he remembered our shirts. And I was like, yeah, for like a minute. Yeah, we, we got we one of your flyers. Your game. You gave us a flyer for Pollen. Yeah, it's um, a game that we didn't play. Yeah, but he said to be VR ready tomorrow. And I was like, is this your way of telling us to fuck off and come back tomorrow? Because we'll just leave. I don't know. I saw them playing uh, with the VRs, and they only had DK2s. Oh, fucking scrubs. Yeah. Uh, Pussies. So, Necropolis. That's a game. Uh, yeah. And I think she said it's going to be out this summer? Uh, yes. Uh, I also PS4 heard, and I, Steam. I overheard a douchebag um, say that it was their last year. Is it? I didn't see it last year. Well, this douchebag did. Oh, was it me? No, it wasn't you. Oh. It was some douchebag. I, I said I said that a lot today. Uh, yeah, but this was about tabletop games. It was about tabletop games. But Necropolis is uh, kind of a cell shaded, 3D like definitely like not like, I wouldn't call it like low poly count like not an intentionally. It has like, it has a unique art style. Yeah, it, it, it's not like a, a super high resolution, or you know, like the resolution's fine, but it's not like super high poly count, like super smooth edges. Like everything's a little bit jaggy, but it, they embrace it in like yeah. a, an artistic way. Uh, it looks a little bit like a really, really good looking N64 game. Yes. Um, but it's Dark Souls. It's a, it's roguelike Dark Souls. Have you played Dark Souls? It's Dark Souls. Yeah, it... Um, There's a couple of different things, the, like the, the charge attacks... Yeah, those um, are cool. Actually, I like those. There's a, there's some there's some item crafting, like you were doing some meat ration crafting yeah. on the fly. Yeah, that was definitely that's different than Dark Souls. I mean, so the problem with a game like Necropolis, and that game was seemed pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna wind up costing about five dollars more than I'd like to pay for it. I bet that's a twenty dollar game. I'm sure of it. Um, I was I, I, I would definitely buy fifteen dollars of game. I would pay fifteen dollars for that game yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, anything more? Maybe, but it wouldn't be as easy. You know, it wouldn't be as open and shut. Yeah. Um, yeah right. But the problem with a game like Necropolis is a uh, it's a roguelike. It draws its own comparisons to other roguelikes. Yep. And like roguelikes. I'm, I'm getting well, I'm getting pretty sick of roguelikes. I don't want to play my roguelikes, really. Uh, I uh, really... I, I One of the things I like about Dark Souls is that it's a cohesive adventure where you, like, create a character and you go on a long journey through many lands and he, he's with you the whole time and he changes and becomes stronger and you get new armor and he's, like, your boy. Like, like it, it, he's your character. He's you. Like, this is just, like, oh, some schmuck that you can changes color like 32 different ways is yeah. now in a dungeon and this run sucks because you just ran into you got shit items spawners yeah. as soon as you open the door to the, gu- d- the dungeon um, but there does like I asked her um, if there was a persistent and then the other thing about PAX is like a lot of times it's like the indie stuff the person who you talk to is like someone who made the game yeah but sometimes it's not and I think like, the lady we talked to was not a developer, but there was a developer really she, close by. She sounded like she's definitely been working with those guys. Like she wasn't just hired for PAX. Yeah, for sure. Oh, totally. Like, like she's been working for those. She guys, definitely those guys. knew what that game was about. Um, and she knew other like she knew other games. Like she mentioned, like I com- I referenced Spelunky. She mentioned FTL. Yeah. Like um, 
you know, like she she knew what she was talking about. I don't think she was just like a fucking hired hand. Some she's a fucking mercenary. Yeah. Uh, like tracer. Uh, that that is just some dress up lady. That was some dress up lady. Uh, she had a butt. She definitely she was near some cars. She's near some Overwatch cars. Uh, you, Will you take more vines tomorrow? I'm gonna take more vines. Hey, do you think those guys at the Cuphead booth? Do you think those guys like were part of the dev team? Uh, uh, I mean, the guys... So, we broke Cuphead. Yeah, dude. We found the glitch. We played Cuphead, and then... Uh, so, we were walking to a shop, and then Nick pushed the equipment screen I while know, I entered the shop. Yeah, I didn't know we were entering the shop. And so, so we I, loaded I, I, up into the shop, and then neither of us could move the controllers. The, the pig in the shop made a really scary noise, which he's always... It was apparently he's supposed to make. That's the noise he makes. Um... Yeah, that's the noise he makes. Apparently, 1940s cartoons just sounded like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, that they wouldn't show us any items. It was just frozen, and nothing moved. And we were like, help, help. And I also let the record show that they basically restarted the game the way that I thought. Like, if I was like, this is my Xbox, this is how I, I would fix the game right now. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, I would just quit it and then hit hamburger. But I don't know, it's, got, it's one of them fucking developer kid Xboxes, and yeah, I don't want to fuck with their shit. It just had, like, a little, they just had, like, a, a cup head on it. So, Necropolis, right? Necropolis. Here's what I'm going to say about Necropolis. Okay. Seems fun. Yep. Seems like potential. I like the fact that I asked her specifically about, is there persistence between runs? And she mentioned this whole, like, if you complete the quest that this... The dungeon dude gives you you get a token and you can buy these books with the tokens yep and they're persistent yep cool that sounds all right because it's also it's not like like rogue legacy did that shit but then the upgrades started costing so much that your bad runs wouldn't even get you an upgrade yet you had, in a certain point you just had to get good yeah uh, that, that's why i stopped playing that game this game yeah that's why i i revile that game and I don't recommend it but like this game is like oh you just do the mission and then even if you can just get one token and that's not enough to buy a tome you can just carry it over to get more tokens Yep. so it seems like yeah you're gonna have bad runs but like there's like a point to playing the game every time it feels like or like you know Crit the Necrodancer had a little bit of that same sim syndrome with yeah. uh, Rope Legacy but you didn't get enough diamonds because you weren't playing the right world you weren't getting far enough then you're kind of you're kind of well. fucked too. But that yeah. game was always about getting good. Like the, the upgrades you unlocked weren't actually making you better like Rogue Legacy was. It was just adding variety. So that's right. why I didn't hate it for that. But the biggest problem with Acropolis, in my opinion, is that if even the developers of the game are comparing it to Dark Souls, that's kind of problematic. Because if you're going to draw a comparison to a popular game series like that, it better be like really like as fucking good as that game series, man. Yeah. There was some stutteriness when. In while we were playing it. And yeah, it wasn't, like, um, like slow down. It was just, like, stutter. Yeah, you which, would just, like, skip forward, like, four or five frames. I don't mind slow down, but stutter I find to be really hard, and you know, especially in a game like that. It seemed like... I don't know, like, the group management and stuff. Like, it, it was definitely different. It was definitely different than Dark Souls. Oh, like, totally. Like, it was... I don't know. That game's good. You just like, pick play up it. weapons off the ground and use I them. I play yeah, it more. I think, that game was, I think that game was really cool. I'm, I didn't really realize that you um, had such an appreciation for I it. I thought it. it was way cooler than it sounds like you thought it was. I think it was cool. But yeah, you were really into it. I was my, into it. My the favorite game I saw today... Was it Pit People? I really like Pit People. People, 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 people. That looks like it's going to be really fun. And Pit they, People. The, the last part of the demo? Yeah. Like, look at all this fucking crazy loot. You don't even know what this shit does. Yep. And it just ended and I was like, but I want to know what the loot do. And then it's like, thanks for like, playing. Know what that loot do? Uh, so the, I was like, okay, well now I have to buy it. And I asked the dude when that game was coming out, Behemoth's new game. Yeah. Um, the story is very bear-centric. Uh, there's a bear involved. Yeah, essentially a bear crashes into the earth and then it fucks up a lot of I shit. I think the narrator was the bear. Uh, that might have been true. And he was just, like, fucking with your shit. There also might be more than one bear now. I don't, I'm not sure. But, regardless, that game is, like, a cool take on strategy RPGs. Yeah, um, it's like, you, mean, you like make a team and you equip your dudes. Everything is goofy. There's, like, mechanics in terms of if a guy's got a helmet, you want to hit him with a hammer. Yeah. Um, but it's ultimately, like, you move a dude into, uh, were they hexagons? No. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're hexagons. hexagons. Yep. Move a dude into a hexagon, 
He has a certain range depending on the unit and the weapon equipped, which you can change later. If you like a unit, you can just give him something else. Yeah. Um, which I think is, I think that's tight. Yeah. Uh, and you just put him in next to some units, and on his turn, like, you move everybody one by one on your turn, like, fire room style, kind of. Yep. Yep. Uh, except yep. Uh, then you end your turn, and all your dudes just attack a dude that they can hit. Yeah, that's right. They just, like, find a guy that they can hit, and that's part of, like, I heard him talking to somebody else, the, one, one of the, the behemoth team guys, saying, like, that's part of the game, is it's, it's, they intentionally, like, streamlined it, and they made it so that your guys just auto-attack, basically, but part of the game is, like, putting it next to the dude you really want to attack and not overlapping. Right. Because you might attack the dude you don't want to attack. It's, like, part of the game. Like, you have to account for that. I think that's that's an, a, a neat take on it. That's totally. got a really interesting uh, control setup for well, the demos. Well, for the demos, it's going to be on, like, an Xbox controller, but, like, for us, we played on, like, what is essentially, like, a Pit People arcade stick. And they said it was going to be on Xbox One and PC. Did they see PS4 as well? I don't think they did. Oh, I'm sure it'll make it there eventually. Yeah. But um, Microsoft seemed to scoop those guys up. Um, Gobbled them up. Yeah, so it was like a... Uh, a, a arcade sort of design where you had the joystick. Yeah, you had a big A button. You had a big A button, a little, little B button. Some trigger buttons. Yeah, left trigger, right trigger button. And then a Y... Lever. lever. Yeah. Yeah, that was, was sick. like... Because, like, you push the Y button... And, well, you hold the Y button to, like, execute all of your orders. And so, like, you sit there, you pull down the lever, and it's like, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Like, and it's I'm like, moved, yeah. I moved all my dudes with, like, the slap of the big, big old A button, and then you're just like, execute turn. I got <sighs> I got really into it at one point, and I'm like, boom, 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 wow. Yeah. And, like, and then I'm like, like... Fucking pulling on, like, a, like a yeah, slot machine. Totally. I was, I was into that. Um, they said they might make some of those. Yeah, they, they actually had some, like... Like, uh, breakaway They had, units. like, a big, like, set-up thing. I should probably put... I took a picture of what this thing looks like, because I knew no one was going to fucking believe me or know what I was talking about. Accurate. Um, and I... And uh, they had some, like, tiny ones that were just, like... This, this was hooked up to, like, a big kiosk, like, a, with, like, 12 monitors all around it and places to sit with the whole setup. Uh, it was very exorbitant and expensive, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, they also had just, like, some TVs with Xboxes. Xbox Ones hooked up to them. And, like, uh, a pad, an arcade <clears throat> stick, like, you'd see if you went to, like, fucking Evo. Oh, yeah. dudes using. But the arcade stick was a smaller version of the Y lever and the big A button. And the guy, one of the behemoth, the behemoth guys that I was talking to, was like, I was like, is this... I was like, I love this controller setup. Is this, like, the preferred way to play the game? Like, is this... This is the way? He's like, oh, we think it's the f- most fun way. It we definitely think it's the was best way. Fun. Yeah. And we were kind of... We kind of want to put in, like, a limited run production of these arcade stick things. And as cool as that is, am I going to buy one? No, because uh, it's literally to play that game. It's, like, not, like, a, a normal controller you can use with something else. I'm sure there's a couple other games. Maybe. But... Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if then if it was actually running on Xbox One, like they got just like like a Microsoft agreed to, um, right? No road rage, no road rage. If like if Microsoft actually agreed to give them their proper drivers for Xbox One, yeah, sticks like that'd be tight. But it wouldn't it wouldn't be good for anything else. Oh, totally. Yeah, it would. Uh, and he also said, I was like, wait, when's the game coming out? It's like we don't have a, we don't have a release date because uh, when you put release dates on things, people get really mad. I'm like, man, you are smart. You are S M A R T smart, dude. Yep. Yep. Because you're absolutely right. And you don't want to have to write that press release of like, it has come to our attention that pit people is not where we want it to be at this time. And to provide everyone with the best gameplay experience possible, we want to make sure that you know blah 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 blah. I'm like, no, that that would suck. Oh. Can we go this way? Yeah, I mean this is fine. I just wasn't expecting this. Um, uh, and that's that's smart, and I'm okay with waiting. Uh, I, I think the game looked really cool, and I'm willing. I, I got I got games to play. I'll do, I'll wait. Yeah, no, that's fine. I I still want to beat Dark Souls three. So did that game that game seem cool though? Did it did it like make you laugh? Did pit people make you laugh, Ryan? Yeah, I didn't want to like laugh too loud, lest the people behind me in line make fun of me. But yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, they know who you are. Yeah. You your Twitter handle. I got the Bearers Man Twitter handle on your shirt. Yeah, that's true. They would just, like, see you laughing, and they would just immediately pull out their phone and tweet at you. You look like a fucking idiot, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I thought that game was actually pretty funny. I laughed. I, I it's got that the behemoth um, I like humor it. style is definitely back in full force oh, in totally. that game. Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, did you notice that if you press B while you're riding in the wagon, your horses poop? No! You didn't do the poop? Fuck! Yeah, dude. The behemoth's comedy style is back in full force with this game, and I thought it was pretty good. Fuck, I wanted to make my um, horses poop. This is bullshit. I don't know if it's my favorite game I saw today. What was your favorite game? Um, probably Push Me, Pull You. Duh! But yeah. Push Me, Pull You, and I actually really liked Marooners. Marooners was cool. I actually yeah. thought that's a really fun idea, and I gave that guy a hot development tip, and I hope he, he, he capitalizes on it. Although I think it might actually be... In there, I don't know. So push me, pull you. We're running out of time here. We We're are. We're almost home. We're almost home. Um, push you know, me. We, we basically just drove past where I live, um, so I can go back and get my car, which that's tight. Push me, pull you is four-player competitive Noby Noby Boy. Yeah. Um, and you play as a cat dog. Two one, players, one controller. Two players, two four players, two controllers. Yes. So it's like two people share a controller, and they get one half of the controller. Right, R two. Makes your hot dog longer, yep. and R one makes your hot dog shorter. Yep. And you control your head of, of the hot dog using the, the analog stick on yep. your side. And I bet there's gonna be like more games to it and stuff. The game definitely wasn't out yet, but that game's coming out like they had like a date. It was like May fifth. Oh, game, did they really? That game's coming out. They might have been only showing off one mode. I, oh, we, yeah. We were actually too into it to, like, actually ask them any questions. Yeah, I don't even know who worked there or whatever. I'm just like, give me the controller. I need to fucking play They were like, do you right want to play? And I'm like, yes. And then uh, we had a great time. And so the whole, it's like a sports game. So there's, like, a big circle, and you each team owns a semicircle. And you have to wrap your hot dog around this big ball yeah. and drag it into your half of the circle. And you're fighting the other cat dog who's also trying to do the same thing. And you just have to hold it there. Like, yeah. Like, nothing fancy, no goals to shoot. You just hold it in position but by like, any means necessary. Yeah. We constantly made, like, big, like, cinnamon buns of, like, ourselves. Like, both teams Gross. rolled up. or It was just disgusting. Cat, it, when, you, when you just grow your hot dog and it's just like... Bleh. It makes a gross noise. You it picked does. up on oh, that? It's oh, terrible. Yeah. It's the best. <laughs> It's so good. That it game's great. Your hot dog is customizable. You'll see that on the stream for sure. Oh, definitely. That, that's that, that, that was pretty great. Uh, we're on Ryan Street now. Marooners. That was really, cool. It's like the, one of the first games we played. Yeah. I thought it was really great. As I as I discussed with one of the developers, it's Mario without the bu- bullshit. He's like, Mario never, Party. I was like, so it's Mario without the BS. And Mario he's like, Party. What did I say? You said Mario. It's Mario Party without the BS. Mario Party. I'm rushing. He's rushing. And then he was like... I was like, I've talked to a lot of people who like Mario Party, and none of them ever said their the board game is their favorite part. And I was like, you right, you right. You and right. so it's like uh, a game, it's like a Mario Party game, plus like a Barman 64 multiplayer. Yeah. Plus like Power Stone. It's weird. Uh, and it's for up to like eight people. Eight or six or something. Six or eight people. Yeah, something like that. Um, it's fewer as many as you got. Yep. And you start a game, and there's like, he said there's eight games right now in the game, and they want to add a lot more. It randomly selects five, puts you in a game, tells you the rules real quick, yep. but ultimately the goal is to collect coins. And if you stay alive in the game, in each game, you can get to the end and get extra coins. And like a 2D one, and like a digging one, and like a one where you're just trying to not get crushed, and one was like a capture the flag, uh, where you hold it, you're holding a thing that gives you extra coins and you want to steal from your opponents yep uh and the goal is to just get the most coins and then after like 20 seconds of playing a game it ends and the next game starts and then if you die in any of the game and it recycles through all of them until all the games have concluded and if you die in any of the games you stay as a ghost and you can kind of fuck with people but you're out of that game Mm -hmm. no matter how many times they cycle back to it you're out the whole time yep which i can imagine might make some pretty unsatisfying like dissatisfying gameplay experience like multiplayer experiences. I don't know. I died in a couple of them and I was okay. Yeah, I, yeah, but it's like if you get like really like killed right away, that can be, well, that, that could probably be pretty frustrating. I mean, the one with the rocks where you're running towards the screen, you yeah. can just get like fucking just killed for no reason. Dank like, was they really just good at that. Jump. One. Oh, Dank. Dank, Dank is re- awesome. Dank, Dank was really good at that. Dank's one. a crazy man with a club. And they also said that you could switch weapons, and the weapons do something a little bit different. Like might attack slower, be more effective. Oh, really? Well, know. it didn't have that. Wasn't there yet? Oh. But. 
Yeah, that uh, game was, was like cool. a fun-looking little three D three D party game. It actually looked kind of cool. Um, the characters were were well realized and yeah. like designed. Um, I definitely gonna, definitely gonna have some fun with that game because I want a free Steam key for the game. It's true. Because I was really good and I got a lot of coins. Even though two developers were playing, they're probably taking it easy. Probably. But like, or well, uh, they're just bad. It could be bad. It yeah. could be bad. Their own game. I mean, yeah. it's not 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 default. Um, and I got like a shitload of coins, and they're like, "Yo, here's your thing. Here's your key, stream key. I'm probably gonna give it to Steam key. They're like, here's your stream key. I was like, how'd you guys know my stream key? That's crazy. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna give it to Ryan so we can play it on stream sometime. Yeah. Or we can just go back tomorrow and win another one. And then we both have one, and then we've stolen from that company. That's true. Um, but that game is pretty tight. Oh uh, yes. Uh, I don't know what else I played today. It's, that's all the best of the stuff I really. That's the about. stuff that it was cool. We played Hob. That game was fine. We'll Hob, talk about that later. Hob is all right. We yeah. might not have as many games that we play tomorrow, so we want to play Pyre tomorrow. We're going to try to play Pyre. So you fucking... mean from Super Giant just announced Super because Giant. they were planning on having it at PAX East, and they're like, "Well, we probably should tell someone about it." I guess. Y- yeah, I wish they didn't, so that we could just fucking play it, and maybe nobody cared. But I don't think that's how that works. That would have been cool because like I would have known about it. Yeah. But maybe not everyone. I don't know. All right. Well, it's always crazy. Anyway, hey, that's a pretty good good approximation of how much time we we're gonna have to talk on the way home. Yep. All right, tight. All right, day one of packs over. Bear vs. Man out. We'll we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> day <laughs> guys <laughs> <was going> on <laughs> pack <laughs> on Saturday. What up? Yeah, we'll do this again. And we're gonna sleep on Sunday. Yeah, we, we are. could I'm, get three day passes. I'm not. I'm not gonna sleep. Get to work. No, but I have stuff to do. I have stuff to do, too. I'm but gonna, I'm going to, like, sleep more than I usually do, probably. I'm, gonna, I'm an adult. Why? Well, I, I mean, I'm too. I think, okay. But, like, I'm going to, like, sleep later than, like, seven. I'm not. Well, you can't. I can't. I don't know how. You don't know how. All right. This is, okay. Gonna, That's break, it. Break. Break. All right. Bye. Bear versus man. Hello. Um, is this thing on? Right, this is, is this bit, thing on? Thing, is, is this bear versus man? Uh, Hello. My, my name is Nick. My name is Ryan. Today is Saturday. It's day two of PAX. We're and, in the car. Uh, I'm going to just say day two of PAX is over, even though it's like not even 6.30. No, it is. It's 6.34. It's, exa- it's 6.34. It's We're exactly done. 6.34. We're done, though. Uh, PAX might not be over, but we are done. We're done. Sto- show floor is closed. Yeah. Uh, there's like a bunch of panels happening, like like Markiplier's in there somewhere right now. Like you could be. I saw Markiplier's stupid head. Looking at Markiplier's dumb haircut. There's also a guy who also has like green hair, and he looks stupid. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Though. Uh, I don't know either. I'm not really up on. I want to go, but like I can't. Like we could. That's like. Here's a problem we were experiencing. We, I, I was like, I can stick around a little bit longer, do some cool stuff. There's no cool stuff to do for the next little while. By a little while, you mean like four hours? Yeah, like a panel or a concert or something that starts like an hour or two or three from now. That'll let out like three to four hours from now. So it's either like we left at six thirty or like eleven thirty. Don't want to do that. And um, that's grueling, dude. I didn't have five hours of me. But Nick, we played video games today. There's a chip tune dance party happening at 9 p.m. It Nick, starts at 9 p.m. Nick, I don't want to dance. No, oh, we we could have. No, we're parked pretty close. No, I don't want to go to chip tune dance party. Nick, we already. Pitch your game ideas. We already left. You're right. We left. We did. I'm, we're in also, the, the two Penny Arcade guys are going to play Overwatch or something. I don't give a shit about I don't that. know. I don't get it. Like, I don't get... I don't think I get PAX. I don't, like, I don't think I understand. I think um, PAX should just be 
where me and you show up and play every single game. Like, we should just show up at the Super Giant booth and they let us into, like, a secret compartment in front of everybody else, and then they talk about how cool we are. Yeah. Like, that's what it should be. Yeah, let's get there. Uh, so if you want us to be as cool as that, uh, please rate us on iTunes. Yeah. Um, we can do a noteworthy motherfucker. But, Nick, we played Pyre. We played Pyre. We, we, we set out today with a goal. We and we accomplished it. And we played, like, two other games besides Pyre, too. It was crazy. Yeah. We went to, like, two panels. Yeah. One was unintelligible. I got some of it. You got some of it. It was what? about, like... It was about RPG... Tabletop RPG systems. And, like, like role-playing stuff. People would, like, walk up and be like, So I want a world where... Ponies and unicorns are. Yeah, we can. Oh, what was that one he was talking? What was the one he suggested for that? Um, oh, I. Fuck, what was it called? Fates Forever. No, it wasn't Fates Forever. Although that sounds. Were okay you too. a sexy teen? Uh, that one sounded alright too. What was that one? The sexy teen. Oh one. God, I forget. My it's something you. No, but it's like something about the whole idea of the game was. The game is like society, like you establish like something like so, like society, nothing normal about society. Like you, like this is what society finds normal. Yeah. And then you add a twist of some kind. Yeah. Like I don't. Remember. It's like this is normal society. However, uh, interplanetary travel is like super normal and common. Yep. Like and then that's like that's how you you role play it from there. Yep. It's cool. Um, that sounds okay, but we cannot remember the name of it. We cannot remember the name of virtually. Any of I, the things that we experienced today. I didn't write down a single thing. No, I probably should have. I took, like, a picture. But I made a vine. Yeah, we did. We should have made a vine. We got so many loops. Oh, hey, dude. but we do remember the name of Pyre. Pyre is a game. It was game from Supergiant Games. Pyre's tight. I would. I want to play Pyre. There's a wizard having her picture taken over there. Shit, yeah. Damn. Pax makes Boston crazy. Hell yeah. Uh, and Pyre is going to be out sometime next year. Yep, undisclosed next year time. Which is good because um, I don't want to play. I, I got too many games I got to play this year. Yeah, plus I just played that game. If I were to play, buy that game now, I feel like unfulfilled. A buffoon? No, oh. no, I just be like, oh, I just played this game. Like, I did have the transistor effect. But, like, in a year and a half or whatever? Totally fine. Totally gonna forget about my experience playing Pyre at PAX East 2016. All right, how would you explain Pyre okay. to to everyone? All right, uh, really simple. Uh, there's a ball. There's a big guy, a little guy, and a not-so either of those. Uh-huh. You're... Your goal <coughs> is to put the ball in the fire. You gotta put the biscuit in the basket. Put the biscuit in a basket. You're gonna put the ball in the fire. Um, a little bit more broadly, um, there's like a. Everybody has an aura, and like if you touch somebody, they go boom. You can only control one of your guys at a time, so a lot of it is positional. Um, oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, dude, you didn't. Like Did setting not? up the big dude for like defense. So like in, in so in that second area where they actually let you play the game for real, uh, I I often put I put the big guy or it's a lady. I'm sorry. I put the big lady um, in the in the middle where like her aura was touching like all of the middle cones. Like the little blocky yeah. mounds. Yeah. It was tight. And then um, I had I I was tossing the the ball back and forth between the little guy and the medium guy. The little guy is like an animal. I don't know. Some kind of fucking fox yeah, looking like thing. he's like some like rat fox with a mustache. He's fucking seems okay, man. Fucking yip yip motherfucker. Um, <laughs> yep. That's the um, the thing that a fox says to you when it wants you to sleep in its tent. That's accurate. That's it's accurate. Really, and make you feel uncomfortable. Um... Yeah, uh, so that's that's Pyre. You're, well, there's way more to there's, Pyre than that. But there's like, like a really deep lore thing that they didn't that they tried to like showcase a little bit, but I think it's gonna well, go very they, far. Yeah, they definitely like gave you uh, what seemed to be a pretty good taste of what the world of Pyre is. Um, but there's clearly like a lot of mysteries about it. It definitely yeah. like made me interested. Like. It, so from the sounds of it, there were like you go on trials, or I think they called them rites. 
Yeah, that's what they call them. Uh, so, like, every time you play a game of Pyre, it, essentially, you're going on a right. Yeah, so and, it's like, and the rights take place in certain locations. You have to travel to them. All the long... Vis-a-vis all, some weird system. Cart. You're, like, you're, you're going through, and um, every night that you have to stop and rest, you can, like, mentor one of your guys to make them good... Or you can read a book. Apparently, reading is a big deal. Like, you're not supposed to oh, be able yeah, to read. Yeah. yeah, they set up a lot. Like, the, the, the first couple of minutes, is about a 30-minute demo. The first couple of minutes really set up a lot about the uh, the world that it's in um, with, with, like, very effectively. Like, not I, a lot yeah. of time, not a lot of words, but you're just like, oh, this place, I get this place. I understand a little bit about this place, and I'm very interested in finding out more about it. Yeah, totally. Uh, uh-huh. It's like you're in some land where banished people go, and you do, it's like you commit a crime, you can just get kicked there to die, basically. And there's some means in which you can go back that is written in this book, but very, very few people know how to read. And your character is, is reading. Like, reading's a crime, right? I think. I, I think in the outer lands, like they really don't like you reading. I can't what they call it. The, the they don't want nobody lands. reading. I think it's. I think it's banished. Some, I can't remember exactly what they call it. Like uh, Outworld, Wild, or, I, I don't uh, know. Like, un, un, Underland. Uh, but I, I was captivated by that. There was also a scene, you get me up with these group of travelers who clearly have a history together. And there seems to be some sort of thing where they're, they appear to be impersonating some kind of p- other Pyre team. Yeah. Like, I don't think those guys are actually, I don't know why, I just think Pyre, like, Pyre's a sport. Like, Pyre seems it, it present, plays like a sport. It's, yeah, it's it, it definitely uh, has some sport like presentation. It, it plays like a it's like a ritual, like a uh, not a, not exactly a religious thing, but it, it, it like plays out like a ritual. Like that's what makes it seems like. But like, but that's what sports is too. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a, a ritual ways. in a lot of ways. It's just like uh, yeah, we're gonna meet in this location and we're gonna all abide by these wicked arbitrary rules. And then and we're whoever gonna do does that. the rules the best is the winner. And, and that's what Pyre is, too. We're going to do that. Context. It's fun. So, like, Pyre is like a sports team, and it seems... Like Pyre, is a, Pyre is a sport, and it seems like your ragtag group of uh, vagabonds is uh, impersonating some other uh, Pyre team. Because you meet a different Pyre team that is probably legitimate, and they're like, Remember me, motherfucker? I'm going to get you for what you done to me. And we're like, oh, shit. Um... And we just like literally just stay silent because we know what this guy's talking about. Yeah. Uh, so I think that story's going to unfold in a really interesting way. Uh, Super Giant Game, although I did not hear the same narrator guy. Mm. It was a narrator who was a little bit. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we played that game when it finally came out and the narrator was just completely different. Oh, like it's a. Oh, you know what? I'm not saying he was a placeholder, but like. I mean, it, maybe. Totally, he was the most off, uh, like off part of the demo, in my opinion. I mean, maybe it is a placeholder, and it's. I, I mean, this seems like a very crafted experience. Clearly, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that was placeholder. Yeah, because game's so far from being developed. It's not just like, you know, like I played below right there at the end. I'm pretty sure that that was just like the most recent build of the game they let you just hit new game on it and go yeah unlike Cuphead and like you know like uh, the um, Cuphead Necropolis was, Necropolis was timed with like a special bonus thing at the end um Cuphead is very clearly just like a segment of the game I think they had three bosses and, and like most of the demos were like specifically made to be like here's what you're gonna play at PAX East uh fuck out of here, let the next person play. Yep. Which is very important, and it also is probably really hard to do, and if you do it effectively, how effectively you do it, like, kind of makes or breaks, but not someone gives a shit about your game. Totally. It's gonna go home and buy it. So, uh, yeah, that's probably pretty hard, but I wouldn't be surprised if the, the, the narrator was, like, he was almost borderline, he was, like, borderline, like, narrator from a, the Behemoth game. Oh. Like, he was, like, a little a bit. A little bit, like, trying, not, like, trying to be funny, but like at one point you like you, you like they call the, the same guy Pyre. and he only knows how to play one guy narrator. No, not exactly. But it's like it's almost like that guy had a very limited pool of what narrators sound like in games. Yeah. And one of those games he played was like Battle Block Theater. He's like, oh, that's what we're going for. All right, I got. It. But no, it's just like 
I didn't the way actually, that the guy was like, or no, actually, you know what? I figured the thing that made me think the most about it because we just played Pit People yesterday, yeah. and that's narrated by like that intergalactic bear or something yeah. that like very much hates you and wants you to die. Yes, like especially that dude Philippe or whatever his name is. Like he's just like, yeah. oh Horatio, a oh, Horatio. He's like, yeah, that fucker Horatio. Then he just died. And he was like, and then he kissed that dude in the lips, and they both just died. Yeah, like, no, that didn't happen. Shit, like he just like hates you and. There was a moment in the Pyre demo where you finish the tutorial Pyre game. Yep. And the dude's just like, enjoy your fleeting stupid victory while it lasts, stupid idiot assholes. Like, they didn't say it like that. But uh, he almost. was... Almost. He was, like, really, like, negative on you as people. It, it seems like um, the narrator is, like, an antagonistic force, which is very different from previous Supergiant games which it's hard for me not to compare this to because um, the music's done by the same guy, which I could tell was, sounded pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's good. And a lot yeah. of the it's like a small team, so their influence is going to be seen across yeah. multiple games. I mean, it's, it looks... It's a really fucking beautiful game. Yeah. Like, that game looks fucking good. Uh, the, the dialogue boxes had some really nice character art stills. Yeah, there's like just um, a lot of little details in that game that I, I really appreciated. Yeah. And the world map was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good looking game. I'm really excited for Fire, and they've got a lot of time to work on it. I'm I'm really curious to see, like, this is what's interesting to me, is like playing a game like this at PAX and then finding what changes in the, in the final release. Yeah. Um, that's going to be really, really interesting, especially, you know, if we don't go next year for whatever reason. I'm sure they'll be. It'll be there next year. Most likely, and probably a mostly completed form. I would. I would assume, unless it comes uh, out before then. But I doubt it. Yeah, like, like they just got the ball rolling, and, like marketing wise on that game. So yeah, they just announced a couple days ago. But that that probably means if you're announcing a game, you're definitely beyond like prototyping. Oh yeah, sure. Pretty a lot. A lot of the the facts of the game are set in stone. Like a lot about the setting and stuff. I'm curious to see uh, how the I'm gonna call them RPG mechanics, but like the part where your guys level up and they get skills, and I'm assuming you built some kind of skill tree. Yeah, they I showed also, that a little bit. I also noticed that you don't like have there doesn't seem to be that many levels. Like uh, I got one of my people to level two, and there might have been like eight levels in like the whole long bar. And yeah. I guess if there's only eight higher matches in the game, supposedly. I don't know, it just seems like maybe the length of the game might be such that it's meant to be played multiple times. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, especially because you have to pick a specialization for your characters as you're going down the tree. You can't just, like, select all the skills. You have to kind of split it up. Maybe it's meant to be, I don't know, I think it's like an arcade game roguelike thing, but um, I think it might be just be like a shorter game that... All, actually, all their games so far have encouraged multiple playthroughs. Yeah. They haven't been, like, super long games by any means, but there definitely was, like, an, another layer. There's, like, a New Game Plus element that was, like, totally optional, but definitely there if you wanted to play it again. Yeah. Uh, so they might be going for something like that. They get, like, a little bit shorter. I haven't, uh, I haven't played Bastion. I don't know. Oh, I've, you haven't played Bastion? I played a little bit. Bastion is really, really good. I need to play Bastion. And it's also a game where you just get to hit buttons. Like, it's just, like, a a fairly straightforward uh, isometric action game. Yeah. Um, so fun. we, I, yeah, it is. I don't, I don't think you get too caught up on being like, oh, it's a movie game with the story and stuff. I mean, yeah. That that element is definitely there. Like the story is one of the best parts of it. But at its base level, it's a button. It's a game where you get hit buttons. Buttons are cool. Nick, what else did we play? Uh, well, you played. We played Cuphead yesterday. We didn't talk about. Oh that. yeah, we didn't talk about Cuphead fucking at all. I, like, yeah. I couldn't really gauge how you felt about playing Cuphead. Uh, you actually were excited about Cuphead because you just saw the visual style of oh, it yeah. like many years ago, and you're just like, fuck, I want I th that. I think, I think I'm going to like Cuphead, but I'm going to be bad at it. Well, there is an easy setting. I'm going to fucking use it. But the easy setting is not always that easy. I mean, we fucking lost a lot, and we switched to easy when we got to the blueberry Guy. sucked. Suck dicks. Yeah, it was bad. So, okay, Cuphead is, the way we played it, like, um, a combination of, like, a... Honestly, kind of reminded me of playing a Kirby game. Do you get that vibe? 
Uh, like yeah, when you're fighting I a Kirby do. boss? I kind of do, actually. So, like, the first boss we fought was, um, uh, the, we were in the farm, right? Yeah, we fought some vegetables. We, we fought vegetables. On, the funny thing is we beat them on normal. I didn't think that that was very hard at all. No, that boss was pretty easy. Although, I died a lot. I died a lot. Um, yeah, so but, like, by I'm, the time... I'm bad. You made it pretty far by the time that we, like, figured you it out. You had to finish up the carrot, which was the third boss. Yeah. Um, so there was, like, a potato, and the potato rolled dirt and worms at you. Um, and you were jumping over them, and then you shoot them. So it was kind of like, instead of, like, spamming your Kirby power, you, like, um, just shoot. It's a shoot. You shoot a lot. Yeah, it's just... It, you it's shoot a, out of your fucking cuphead finger. Yeah, you just point your finger like a gun, and bullets come out of it. And it also has, like, Gunstar Heroes-style power-ups, like, homing... And spread and, which and seems Fushroda. like seems like persistent. Oh, you have the whole system of getting setting up special attacks and then either saving them to execute at the right moment or yeah. whatever. There's an item shop. Yeah, that that part seemed persistent. It wasn't like an arcade. Like, oh, you found the tracer because you shot one of the carrots at the carrot shot. Right. Um, it was like you bought that that shit and you had it forever and you could switch between them. Uh, so I don't know what the structure of Cuphead is gonna be. I mean, I feel like if it's just—is it gonna be that? Is it good? So there was like a world map. Yeah, but I feel like you would just walk around the world map and beat these eight bosses because it's just boss rush. There's no levels or anything, as far as I know. No, I feel like I if it's just anything. beat yeah. these nine bosses, like definitely you're not gonna beat those bosses on their first try. No, they're hard. Um, they're they're difficult for sure. And when um, you die, it says you died across the screen like some Dark Souls shit. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I just don't know if, like, if that's the game, I wonder. If that's a whole game, just nine bosses. It's like, what if it's like a fifteen dollar downloadable? I'm sure it'll be downloadable in some regard. I I probably wouldn't think it'd be more than twenty five bucks. But like, see, the the thing is, it's like I don't know how much they're banking on like the visual style selling that game, which it totally does, like in a lot of ways. Um, but like, I don't think. It's such an interesting direction to take it, too. Yeah. The, the visual style stands on its own, and they said, like, okay, well, we got we figured out a way to animate this dope visual style. It was like, but, like, like, what do we do in this game? But what do we make this game? Yeah. It's like, well, I guess we make it a boss rush. It's like, okay. Sh yeah, sure. Um, why not? At that, I would be okay... Oh, man, I, I, that game, that game needs fucking levels. That game needs a cool-ass world. I, I bet that's a horror. Yeah, no shit, it's hard. You have to create all the different, like, little enemies. Why do you think that it's it's probably going to be a boss rush? Is because fucking that shit's hard to do. Maybe Cuphead 2, after they have their engine all in place, they start designing smaller enemies and... Nick, what if it's episodic? And they add the levels later? And No, what if it's episodic and the, the first episode is uh, Cuphead and Mughead? going on an adventure through farmland land and then and oh then, and then that would be kind of disappointing because <laughs> there would be like nothing if it's just bosses you gotta have a bunch of bosses you gotta do like a titan soul sort of thing where yeah there's only bosses but there's like a shitload of them I bet you it's gonna have a titan souls kind of format it's cause titan souls has a tiny little world map and you just go fight a boss but the thing about Titan, I mean, it's a very, very different dynamic. It, you know, the comparisons to Shadow of the Colossus are definitely there, but it's a very different dynamic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what Cuphead's going to be. I also don't know what else. I know I played Below because I just finished playing that, basically. But, yeah. But uh, I don't know what else we played today. We um, just played Pyre. We played Pyre. No, we played Pyre. We, we went to two panels. And we went... We played... Um, did I actually play anything else? We were like, hey, let's go see if it's even possible to play Overwatch. And it's like, no, Didn't. it's absolutely not. Yeah. It's every single place that had Overwatch was just swarmed with people. Um, I don't think we played anything else. You played uh, that that game, uh, what, in the indie mini booth? Yeah, Fate Tectonics. That seemed fine. That was a game... I walked you. I walked into it. That, that game seems okay. Uh, so you have nothing to say about Below? That game. Uh, looked, that I'm game get, looked really good. I'm getting to it. Uh, I, I'm just. 
the game looks. I'm I'm definitely intrigued by it below. We also saw uh, an old man who may be crazy explain how he made the board game Pyramid Arcade, and it's like a thousand games in one. And he's like, also you could just make more games if you wanted to. Yeah. And he's like, I've like this is the my magnum opus. Like I've waited my entire life to create. Like, Damn, you're. Really I got intense. Nuts. You're really intense, old man. Yeah. Uh, okay, so old, so below. Yeah, what's below? It looked like a game that you crafted in it. Uh, it's an isometric survival game with Dark Souls elements. Oh shit! Is Dark Souls elements the new RPG elements? Yeah. If you want to have an action RPG, I also saw a game. I don't remember what it was called. It's a game we played yesterday too. And I can't even remember. Uh, um. We played that game Windscape. Oh yeah, that's that, like a, a low poly count uh, Skyrim. That like the guy who's like publishing the game was like, yeah, this guy sent me this game and it was like a low poly count shooter, like with the same art design. And I was just like, get this shit out of my face. This game is really uninspired. Like the game looks really cool, but the gameplay is super uninspired. And then told, then they thought like, what if we made a Skyrim like with crafting? Oh. And, like, I'm not saying that game is bad, I but, threw like, it in my mouth when I heard him say that a little bit. Yeah, that... I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm not going to say that game is bad. No, I'm going to say that game is bad. Uh, it seems like it has a lot of work yet to be yeah, done on it. I mean, it, there's that. So I can't really pass that. I mean, game. I was mostly upset when the guy was, like, telling you how to play the fucking game the whole time. Yeah, well, I, you definitely did need a little bit of direction because of the nature of that game. I wouldn't want any. I'd be like, no, fuck off. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not saying I wanted it, but like, no, fuck off. Like, fucking, I'm here. Yeah, you, it's a pretty open ended experience. Yeah. It was. It was. It's a, like he said, it's a hard game to demo. I'm not gonna. Dis, I'm not gonna disagree with him. Like, I'm gonna say that that there. game was not ready to be demoed because uh, probably half not. of it was missing. Probably not. But he had a fourth computer to use, so. <laughs> Uh, he could have played two uh, but, of a good game. So below is like um, McCappy Games, music by Jim Guthrie. Made made some music that I like for video games. Okay, sure. Um, I like him. And you awaken on an island, and you're a little man. You're a very tiny pixel man. Like it's very zoomed out. It's like the, one of the things about it's a tiny below bit that really catches my eye. It's a tiny bit more zoomed in than Titan Souls. Yeah, it's like very much on that same scale. Yeah. But you wake up on this beach and you can go inside this cave and you can light campfires and there's craft you have an inventory that seems pretty limited and there's crafting, you can pick up new weapons off the ground. Um, but when you So I think I heard one of the developers say the game's pretty regenerated one way or another. Mm. Um, when you die in that game, a different dude wakes up at the last campfire you lit. Yeah. And you can go find most of the stuff off your dead body. Yep. So it's... I don't know what to make of that game, because when you die, you don't just, like, hard start over, like a roguelike, but you also... Like, some of the stuff reshuffles, and you go back in. Yep. But it, I don't know if it's, like, a Dark Souls that's, like, a big, grand adventure that you carry through the whole game, or if it's supposed to be a shorter game. I'm actually... I'm very fascinated by Below, which is good because it's coming out um, soon, somewhere, sometime between now and the end of quarter three this year. Mm. Uh, it seemed like the game was pretty much done. They just kind of had like the the fucking Xbox One for, no, actually they're playing on PC. But like, it was, they, yeah, PC. Xbox One controller, but it's like, pretty much just had like a executable of the game running that had like options and everything. It wasn't just press A to play Below mm. like some of the other demos we played are. Uh, and they even had the guy, like, manually being like, alright, it's been 15 minutes, stop. Um, which is, like, maybe they're just in crunch to the point they didn't have time to make a specific demo. I feel like it's probably worth the effort to make a specific demo, like we talked about before. Yeah. To really encapsulate the experience, then also save the guy the booth trouble of, like, being like, hey, get every single fuck time. off. Yeah, every single time. We're back home. Hi. Next day two is over. The Cards Against Humanity panel is always popular, according to Pax Lines. They're already tweeting about it three hours before it starts. But we're so home. Guys, we're home. Yeah, we don't have to worry about lines anymore. Pax is over. There's a thing happening tomorrow. Um, there's some more stuff happening at Pax tomorrow. The Expo 4 is open for a few more hours. Uh, we're not there. 
No, we're not going. We have um, lives we have to live. We're we're adults. And also, we couldn't get three day passes. We couldn't get three day passes. I was seriously like on there buying tickets like within within ten minutes of them going up. Three gone. days were already gone. Gone. And it's like, well, I don't. It's like, well, I don't want to go on Sunday anyways. So they should just have fucking more of those, but just charge more money than they do. Because like what we paid was the same amount as a three day. Yeah. But could we have gotten just all three days? Yeah, we could have, but, like, I didn't want to pay, like, more than a three-day. I guess I just didn't care about... Yeah, I guess I didn't either. Right. And I said, like, for the extra money for the third day, like, for the shorter day, well, I would, like, waste the whole thing going to see that Paximania video game yeah, fucking, wrestling thing. Which they just put on... Which is on the fucking main stage. Oh, I guess that might be broadcast, too. I'm sure it's broadcast. Well, that's in the main stage. It's not, it's not on the main stage, is it? It is this year. Oh, fuck. If yeah, they, we can definitely watch it tomorrow. Yeah, I remember seeing that tweet about the guy who organizes it just being like, holy shit. Like, he was just like, he just put us on the main stage. I don't, I didn't even necessarily ask for this. This is just happening. Um, yeah, a lot of that stuff was broadcasted. Like, you could see the Markiplier panel at home if you wanted to. If you like also, if you're looking at Polaris's Twitch stream, you could have seen, like, a dude rapping or something. Yeah. I don't that know was fucked up. Fuck that was. Polaris is just, like, really... They're really in tune with what millennials like, so they know what's good. Word. <coughs> we will um, be back with a regular episode of the Bear vs. Bandcast pretty soon, I hope. Uh, probably. Um, Ryan's going to play some games. Not for you, for me. I'm yeah, playing. no, he's doing it for him, and he's going to tell us about it. We're going to play Bravely to Fall, Bravely Second, oh, yeah. and Layer some more. But I'm kind of into that game now. That game's cool. Uh, yeah, like, I, at first I thought the pacing was really slow, now I've got more jobs, and I'm, like, a little bit into it. Yeah, jobs. Now I have more than one job. Yeah, that sucked. All right, we should just, we can't talk about that again. All right, we're done. We're, we're done. done. We're done. We're like packs. We're done. Packs done. All right, bye. Later, guys.